Ephesians chapter 3, continuing the series of teachings on <clears throat> the power of personal faith. Someone say the power, the power. of personal faith. Personal faith. Amen. Before I get into the lesson about the power of personal faith, I thought I'd share with you a quick um, lesson in grammar. Is that okay? It's like, all right, where is he going? <laughs> now, I want to teach real quickly because I was studying and it just blew me away. The difference between an antonym, a synonym, and a homonym. Uh-oh. Now, a homonym, they are words that sound the same but have different meaning. So there's ear, A I R, and then there's ear, H E I R, and then there's ear, E A R. Three different words <clears throat> sound the same. Steer. S-T-A-I-R, walk up the stairs. Steer, S-T-A-R-E, if you steer at someone. Son, S-O-N, S-U-N. Those are two word homonyms. Then there's three different words. Tail is one of them, T-A-I-L. Then there is T-E-L-L. Then there is T-A-L-E. Now, a four word homonym is even more rare. And I was studying there's four words. They all sound the same. But they mean something different. By, B-Y, that means a word that describes the length or proximity. He stood by the chair. It means to conform. He acted by the rules. It can be a measurement. The room was 15 by 20 feet. That's by, B-Y. Then it's B-U-Y. It means to purchase, to acquire, the possession or ownership of something. Then there's B-I, all sounding the same. B-Y, B-U-I. B-I, which means twice, like a bicycle, two wheels, bi-weekly. Then there's B-Y-E, and it's used to express fear well, by. Now, the word by, B-Y-E, is different, particularly from a football perspective, Jeff. It means two different things to two different teams. B-Y-E to the Steelers means bye-bye, season over, see you in six months. BYE to the Patriots means we don't have to play this Sunday because we have a bye week. So I just thought I'd teach you all the homonyms. Amen? Amen. Yeah, so bye can mean different to different people. Yes. To the Steelers, bye. Bye, AB. Bye, Le'Veon. Bye, your chances for a Super Bowl. For the Patriots, we have a bye week. Amen. Are you in Ephesians chapter 3? Yes. Amen. Okay. But at least you know what a homonym is. Next week we'll deal with an antonym. <laughs> Chapter 3, verse 20. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power. The key phrase, his power. Somebody say his power. His power. But watch where his power is at. His power that is at work within us. It's his power, God's power, that's at work within us. The reason this is very important, literally, every one of us, every one of us in here has the same amount of his power that's in us. If you're saved, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, that the Bible says about him, that God raised him from the dead, you're saved. Part and parcel with your salvation is the presence of his power inside of you. The Holy Spirit now comes inside of you. I don't have more Holy Ghost than Elder Devin. Elder Devin doesn't have more Holy Ghost than Tika. We all have the same amount of God's power in us. Uh, The question becomes, if we have the same amount of God's power, why are some people more powerful? Why are there weak believers and why are there strong believers? If we all have the same amount of God's power, his power, God didn't give one person more power or less power. What makes a Christian more powerful than another believer is not the presence of more God in their life. It is the presence of them understanding the more I submit to God in my life, the more power I have. Amen. Amen. It's not getting more of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit getting more of you. It's not getting more of God. It's God getting more of you. So I want you to have a revelation that you literally, with God's help, determine your destiny. You're the captain of your ship. The state of your life, you can change it based upon you having a revelation of God's power within my life. Somebody say, I control control my destiny. destiny. 
You have to say that with power. You got to say that with, with faith and confidence that you literally have control over your destiny. It's, it's what Paul said when he said, it's what Paul meant when he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen? Amen. Now, in order to improve the circumstance of your life, you must first improve yourself. And in order to prove yourself, you must learn how to improve your mind. Somebody say, my mind. My mind. Your mind. Go with me to Romans chapter 12. <clears throat> We're going to spend some time in Romans chapter 12. Your mind. We are tripartite. Tri, three. And so we're made in the likeness and image of God. And, 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 and God is a trinity. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. There is a trinity within us. Meaning, I am a physical body that possesses a soul and also has a human spirit. Once I get saved, my human spirit gets sanctified by God's Holy Spirit. So that part is protected, but my soul has to be regenerated. My soul has to be changed on its own. My spirit gets changed. <clears throat> change at the moment of salvation. My soul, I keep doing it. it's not like necessary, it's like this, but I like to think of it this way, like this part inside of me is my spirit side. This part is my soul. Within your soul, part of me, is your mind, will, and emotions. That is the soulful part of every human being. Your mind, which is logic. It's immaterial, it's invisible. You can take an MRI and they can't see your mind. They can't x-ray your soul, but it exists. Your brain is physical. It, is, it exists physically, but the brain responds to your mind. Mm. I need you to understand that. Within your soul, you have your mind, your will, what you will and will not do. You have the power of choice and decision. Within your soul, you have a mind, you have a will, you have emotions. Your physical brain takes signals from your soul. If your emotions are, are, are very happy, if your emotions are positive, this has been proven from a scientific, biological perspective. There is no dispute about this. It's not even a church thing, saved and unsaved. Jewish doctors, Muslim doctors, Buddhist doctors all say, say the same thing, that your brain can determine to a certain extent the condition of your body. A brain that is constantly thinking of positive things, a brain that's constantly thinking of things that are correct and right, will literally release chemicals that can strengthen your immune system. A brain that is constantly having negative thoughts, a brain that has, is being bombarded by pessimism and depressing thoughts, it literally can release chemicals that can weaken your immune system. And it's deep because I'm studying... <clears throat> There's like all type of books about the mind, subconscious mind, power of the mind, power of the brain. And I'm studying it from a secular perspective. And God said, turn to Proverbs 23. You don't have to go there. But I turned to Proverbs 23, 7. It was like a like a sarcasm from God. He said, as deep as you're getting, which I want you to get deep. Understand, I said this 2,800 years ago. I told Solomon to tell the world 2,800 years before Freud was born that as a man thinking within his heart, so eventually he becomes. As a man thinking within himself, eventually he becomes. And so that's why we really need to understand the power of the mind and what the mind is able to do. So go to Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Verse 2, do not, this is Paul, conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. Somebody say transform. <laughs> he says, listen, stop thinking like the world, become transformed. That word transform or transformation comes from the Greek word metamorphosize. And it's a two word, meta, which means to change. Morphosi means form. So Paul says, don't be conformed, which means allowing the things of the world to determine how you think. Don't be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed, be metamorphosized, be changed. Well, Paul, how can I be transformed? How can I be metamorphosized? How can I be changed? The Bible says, by the renewing of your mind. 
The renewing of your mind. Very powerful. This is old school, but there used to be a commercial from the United Negro College Fund that said, A mind is, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Our minds determine the state and condition of our life. I shared this on Wednesday. Your mind has, is made up of two parts, two layers. It is made of the conscious part and then the subconscious. Now, what's deep is the conscious mind is what thinks and rationalizes. It hears, it sees, it perceives, it, 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 it thinks and things like that. Now, what happens is your thoughts go from your conscious mind to your subconscious. Somebody say subconscious. subconscious. You know, I'm teaching. So sub, it really means to submit. Now, stay with me. The subconscious mind submits to the conscious mind, and it holds on the thoughts and ideas and beliefs and words that were spoken and pictures that were seen. It holds on to them forever. Our mind has a phenomenal Memory. Somebody say memory. memory. The reason this is important is you determine what you want to remember. Amen. Y'all didn't catch that. The reason a lot of us are not progressing as much in life because we keep going down the wrong memory lane. Mm. We go down the memory lane of failure. The lane, we keep remembering all the rejection in our life. We keep remembering all the sin in our life. We keep remembering all the hurt in our life. We keep remembering all the mistakes in our life. We keep remembering all the pain in our life. And because we're remembering these things, even when you get saved, even when you belong to a church called Destiny, even when your pastor is always speaking powerful, positive, prophetic words, the reason why it's difficult for some of you all to change, you're hearing in your conscious mind you can do it, but your subconscious mind is saying, no, you can't. Your conscious mind is telling you, Pastor just said, I can do all things to Christ Jesus that strengthens me. My pastor just said, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. The man of God just said that, that I am the apple of God's eye. The man of God just said that I was made in God's likeness and image. The man of God just said in Psalm 139 that when God wove me together in the inmost being, that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Can I even spend fearfully and wonderfully made one minute on those words. Oh, you got to catch that. Listen to what God says. In the Hebrew, the word fear comes from the Hebrew word yare. Y-A-R-E. It has two definitions. One is to be afraid. The other one is to be in awe. So that's why the Bible says you, if you fear God, you won't fear man. If you're in awe of God, you won't be afraid of man. If you're in awe of God, you won't be afraid of cancer. If you're in awe of God, you won't be afraid of finances that don't look well right now. But when you're not in awe of God, you'll be afraid of the world. But y'all didn't catch this. God's the Bible, Psalm 139. God tells David, David, write this. When I made you, I made you fearfully. God says, when I made you, I was amazed at what I was creating. I made you, and I said to myself, oh me. So you thought, oh no, oh my God. He said, oh me. I'm making someone that can overcome all odds and become the first black president of the United States. Oh me. I'm making someone that can grow up and be a murderer in Egypt but a deliverer of three million people. Oh me. I'm making someone that's the eighth born that his daddy forgot about him but he's going to become king of Israel. Oh me. I'm making a woman that will be known as a prostitute, Rahab, but she will save my people. Mm. I'm amazed. The problem is, you're not amazed at you. You should be looking at your life and get to the point to say, I'm amazed. I'm amazed. Rafiq, can I share? Me and Rafiq was talking a few days, I mean last week, and he was saying, he said, Pastor, I feel what you said, man, just a couple years ago, I was going through this, this, and that, really making it, bam, 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 and to see where my life is at now. To see what I'm doing and to see what my occupation and my vocation is, I'm amazed. You need to look at your life and just shake your head and say, man, I did it. And if you can't say it now, meaning presently, then you need to say it by faith. Man, I'm going to do it. Well, I'm going to do something. And it's not, see, I should, can, 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 I, can I teach? 
I had to shoot on Wednesday. Everybody talking about Happy New Year. It's not a new year. It's another year. You went from 2018 to 2019. How is that new? If your car is five years old and next year is six years, it's not a new car. You 60 turn 65. You will find out quickly. You ain't getting newer. You getting older. So you got tricked, bamboozled, hoodwinked, led astray about this happy new year. You got the same old job in this new year. You got the same bad credit in this new year. You got the same, no, nothing is new under the sun. The earth got another year older. If you want to transform your life, it ain't based upon a new year. It's based upon a new mind. This is 20, next year is 2020. It's not a new year. It's another year. How are you going to take advantage of January 2019? It's not based upon the newness of January. It's based upon the newness of your mind. Oh, I wish I could have a church. Because your mind determines what your brain does. The body submits to your brain. Sean, you're working on your bachelor's degree right now, correct? Correct. That's because his mind said, I should go back to school. Once you start thinking, you talk what you think. Amen. Did you talk to your wife about going back to school? Oh, yeah. You talked to me about going back to school? Yeah. Then you had to call, you talk to Elder Devin about going back to school? See, he thought about it, and then he started talking about it. Once you think about something, you'll talk about it. After you talk about it long enough, you'll start doing it. Amen. That's why you got to watch your thoughts because your thoughts determine your talking. Your talking determines your actions. What you do consistently becomes a habit. Right now, he's in the habit of being a good student. There are other people in the habit of being bad students. Elder Devin is a counselor at CCAC and a professor. He deals with students that are getting A's and he deals with students that are flunking out. What is the difference between they all thought they should go to CCAC, they all talked about going to CCAC, they all enrolled at CCAC, but why is some flunking out? Because they have a habit of not studying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, your thoughts determine what you say. What you say determines what you do. What you do determines your habit. Your habits influence your character, and your character determines your destiny. Amen. And it all started with a thought. I'm going down. I can go to. I can go on Monday to Duquesne University and see Sean sitting in class based upon a thought. I can go Monday afternoon to the Allegheny County Jail and see another black man sitting in the cell because of a thought. He had the thought to go to school. He had the thought to sling drugs. You gotta watch your thoughts because they will determine where you sit Monday morning. So, 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 it says, watch this, Romans 12, it says, do not be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed, changed, made better by the renewing of your mind. Today's English Version Bible says, do not conform outwardly to the standards of this world, but let God transform you inwardly by a complete change of your mind. The Jerusalem Bible says, do not model yourselves on the behavior of the world around you, but let your behavior change modeled by your new mind. You need to understand this. Just as you can physically, I don't know how many New Year's resolutions that there are. That's why, you know, somebody say it's not about a New Year's resolution. It's about a new mind resolution. I'm resolving to change my mind. Many people, it's funny, when me and Devin used to work out way back at Bally's, when me and Jeff work out at Cruncher LA Fitness, you show up in January, the parking lot is what? Packed. But anybody to work out seriously, say, just wait till February. That parking lot, everybody's standing in line on the ellipticals, everybody's doing sit-ups, everybody's doing this, this, and that, because they got a New Year's resolution. I want to lose this, I want to do that, I want to stop smoking, I want to improve my credit. And those things literally change before March comes. Because it's not a New Year's resolution, it has to be a new mind resolution. Amen? Amen. So watch this. It says, by the renewing, somebody say renewing. renewing. Beautiful long word. Anakinesiosis is the Greek. It means a new start, 
to make new again, to begin all over, watch this, to readjust. Come on, come on, watch this. I'm studying this. You guys know when I share these words, it ain't too impressive that you had to study them in, in, in seminary anyway, but the Greek is a much more intellectual language than the English. And so when you understand the Bible, if it's New Covenant in the Greek, if it's Old Covenant, learning Hebrew and the splattering of Aramaic, it gives you greater insight into the intent of the authors. Amen? Amen. So that's why I'm breaking this down. Give you the perfect example. The word for mind in the Greek is suke. It's where the English word psyche comes from. See, when you go to a Devon who's a therapist, and working on his doctorate and could become a psychologist. Psychologist, suke, a psychologist and a psychiatrist are people that study other people's minds. Yeah, yeah you ready for that? God said there would be less people having to go to a psychiatrist if they learn to study their own mind. Yeah. All Devin's job is to try to help you rethink what's going on in your life. Come on, wake up, watch. Whatever has happened to you in the past that is holding you back in the present is based upon how you think about what happened to you. Yes. Yes. Come on. Oprah Winfrey got raped when she was growing up. Oprah Winfrey got abused when she was growing up. Oprah Winfrey was called fat, black, and ugly when she was growing up. She chose not to always think about that, and that's why she's worth $2.4 billion. Other people that have went what Oprah have went through have never turned the corner. They're on Prozac and all type of other medicines. They're spending three hundred dollars a month copay going to psychologists, psychiatrists, and therapists. Which I'm not knocking. You need that. I went to a therapist for for a point in time in my life. But what I learned was the therapist's job was to help me think correctly. And I'm saying, you know what, God, you can help me think correctly. You can help me look at my pain and tell me my pain was not designed to keep me in pain, but to push me to my purpose. You can help me look at my mistakes. You can help me look at my shortcomings and my failures and say, son, you made the mistake. You failed. You already paid the time with the crime. Now move forward. Or I can look at my mistakes and let the enemy keep me in bondage to who I used to be, not who I am. I know my help. See, listen, I'm telling y'all, I don't care. Well, I got an ankle monitor. Oh, we all of us got some type of ankle monitor. Y'all ain't ready for that. Yeah. Satan trying to keep us all in bondage to our past. Amen. And so it's how you view what you have went through that will determine what you can now go through. Yeah. <sighs> man, man, man. So if the God said telling people to become a psychiatrist to themselves. Study your mind. Find out. Oh God, my goodness! Listen, 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 listen. Go to, go to. I want you to go there yet. No, 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 no. Who? Thank you, Holy Spirit. See, we live in such a fallen world that we're not down with the level of failure in this world. Talking to Pete earlier today, we was talking about the system. That can, can sometimes sham a lot of these for-profit schools and all of these other things that went out of business and now folks got $40,000 loans that they can't even use because a decree is not even accepted somewhere else. And, and, and he was saying how just how hurt he was. And I said, you know what's deep? None of us had to go to school, but the system teaches that your success is only in higher education. No, your success is finding your purpose. And if it requires college, go to college. If it requires trade school, go to trade school. If it requires barber school, go to barber school. If it requires, let me tell you something, some of the greatest preachers on earth never went to seminary. They're self-taught. You can be a self-taught success. You just got to learn what you need to be teaching yourself. Mm. So I understand the renewing of my mind had to start years ago when I got a revelation of how negative my mind was. And I understood what made my mind negative, the negative world I grew up in. Understood what made my mind negative. I'm on Homewood, and I'm seeing father get killed, uncles getting killed, cousins getting killed. I'm seeing all of this level of violence and incarceration and addiction before the opioid came and you start trying to help folks out. You, you, you criminalized us. 
You victimized us. You put us on the cover of Time Magazine and said crack babies. Now white folks get high and all of a sudden you gotta look. Mm. So I'm growing up in this violence. Will knows what it's about. I'm coming up in this high level of violence. But this is what God said. He said, I want you to go back on a memory lane of your youth. <sighs> Before any of these things occurred, go back to your childhood. I was born in 66. Go back to the early 1970s, Marlon. You can now understand what it means about the good old days. Before we were surrounded by innocence and positivity, our parents or parent protected us from the evils of the world. We watched cartoons, not the evening news. Our minds were filled with George Jetson and Fred Flintstone. Shoot, we hardly noticed or got aroused by Wilma in her little key caveman bikini suit. We watched the electric company, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, Burt Oney, Miss Piggy, and Big Bird. We were entertained by Scooby-Doo, Pink Panther, Speed Racer, Inch Out, Private High, Hong Kong, Fooey, Fat Albert. Before the violence, nudity, and homosexuality of Lucius and Cookie Lions on Empire, or Ghost and Cane and Power, or Orange is the New Black, Mary Jane, Queen Sugar, Green River, Blackish, we watched Good Times. What's happening? Sanford and Son. We watched George and Wheezy moving on up. Different strokes. What you talking about, Willis? Benson, the Cosby Show, A Different World, Living Single, and The Fresh Prince. Before Xbox and PlayStation and the violent video games called Mortal Kombat, Sniper Elite, Resident Evil, Dead by Daylight, Dark Souls, Bullet Storm, Assassin Cream, Doom, and Fortnite, we played with Nintendo and Atari. Our games are called Pac-Man and Donkey Kong and Mario Brothers, Gallagher, Frogger, Miss Pac-Man, Centipede, Super Mario Brothers. Let me go way back. We played Pong and Space Invaders, Asteroids and Breakout. We played Ping Pong and we did arcades and pinball machines. Ah, can I help somebody? Remember Ollie Ollie Income Free and no football and basketballs, Legos, Play-Dohs, Hot Wheels, on tracks, G.I. Joe with the Kung Fu grip, electric football, hopscotch, pogo stick, the slinky, frisbee, magic eight ball, hula hoop, jacks, Rubik Cube, swimming putty, water guns, tag, you're it, ripping and playing the dozens. All the good old days I can remember as a kid growing up in East Liberty Garden, 7 Fairham Court, across from the original in the brass rails, when all I needed for breakfast, lunch, and dinner was life. Lucky Charms, Fruit Loops, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, Apple Jacks, Pebbles, Rice Krispies, Cocoa Krispies, Alphabet, Captain Crunch, Cocoa Puffs, Mr. T, Corn Pop, and Cookie Crisp. Shoot, our ideal of healthy cereal was Raisin Bran, Mini Wheats, Frosted Mini Wheats, Special K, and Wheaties. And what about some strawberry and chocolate Pop Tarts? Oh, I'm talking about I can't let go my ego. Give it to Mikey. He won't eat it. He eats everything. Those were the good old days. Orange big wheel days and BMX bike days. Lights come on outside, time to go inside days. Before smartphones, flip phones, cell phones, page of people or a quarter in the phone booth. Before mumble rap and gangster rap, there was old school run DMC, Curtis Blow, Grandmaster Flash, and Curious Fire Rap. Before A.B. left the game early, no playoff this season, there was four Super Bowls in six year days. Before Colors and Crips and Bloods, OG Law, Hood Town, it was just Westinghouse, Peabody, Brashear, Oliver, and Shinley. Before crack cocaine, heroin, and the opioid addiction, it was Cools, Newports, and some old E. But now it's 2019. And we all grown up with bills and rent and mortgage, student loans, dead marriage, divorce, depression, and despondency. Well, I got some news for you. Jesus came and said, I come to give you life and life to the fullest. I know I want you to go back to the good old days of Holly Holly, our income free. I want your mind to go down and stroll down memory lane when life was swell. Watch this. Don't stay there. Just get a taste of the good old days. Bring them good old days into your problem days. And watch how your mind gets renewed and you view your problems ah, from a different perspective. Renewing 
of your mind. You determine. You can look at your community and complain about it. Listen, you want to fast? Fast the news for a couple weeks. Fast the news. Don't turn on CNN. All you want to hear is impeach the mf -er and do this and do that. That's what the lady said about Trump. You want to hear about government shutdowns and people who ain't worked for three weeks losing their jobs. Imagine them being a TSA screener and you got to work and they can't get paid. I mean, that's slavery. So I even, because I keep my mind positive, I decided, let me rest my mind for a season from all the negativity. I know what's going on. We all know what's going on. We all know what's going on. But because we live in such a negative world, I'm going to tell you how negative the world is. Television news, Channel 11, 4, whatever your channel is, CNN, Fox, whatever it is, they're on air based upon selling commercial time. So if you turn on Channel 11 at 5 or 11, the first 15 minutes, if you want to air a commercial, is much more expensive than the last five minutes. Same commercial, you want to release uh, plumbing. If you want to air at 11.06, it's going to cost you $10,000. If you want to air that same commercial at 11.26, it's going to cost you $2,000. Why is it so much more expensive in the beginning? Because more people are watching the news the first 15 minutes. But guess what? The first 15 minutes, all you want to find out is about the fire in Homewood, the killing in Larmer. The, the little seven-year-old girl that got killed in front of the Walmart. You want to hear all of the negative stuff. Then it's going to go to weather from the severe. Why got to be severe weather change? Why, you know, everything got to be so severe. Right? You know, it's sunny, but it's severe weather. So they want to scare you with the weather. Joe DiNardo said it would. That's old school. Then you're going to go to the, the sports. And you're going to hear all of the stuff that's going on. And then the last five minutes of the news is reserved for positive stories. Yeah. And the reason why it's only $2,000 to advertise then, because the average Pittsburgher, after they get their mind filled with negativity, clicks off the TV and goes to bed with negative thoughts in your conscious and subconscious. Every night, I lay in the bed, and it's either I got headphones on, or if I listen to the smartphone, and then Camille say, put your headphones on. But I'm listening to YouTube or Audible book. I'm feeling my, before I go to bed, I understand how the soul works, the mind, the subconscious, the brain. I said, I got to fall asleep with some positivity. Because I'm going to wake up to some negativity. And I need to fall asleep. That's part of renewing your mind. Amen? So, cool. so watch what it says. Stay with me. It says... Do not be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, period. Watch what it says after that. A renewed mind, then you will, then, somebody say then. then. After the renewing of your mind, you'll be able to test and approve, discern, peep, understand, grasp, comprehend, figure out what God's will is for your life. His good pleasing and perfect will and you know the beautiful thing about this when you find his good will you feel good yes. when you find his pleasing will you feel pleased yes. and when you find his perfect will you feel perfected yes. and that will take you to another level in the walk in the kingdom a perfected mind yes. a perfected mind remember that's why I love to teach the English word for perfect means no mistakes a picture throws a perfect game uh, where's Greg at Greg, I said, yeah, I mean, Greg, Greg, Greg witnessed me the other day bowl a perfect game. Perfect. See, a perfect baseball game is 27 battles up, 27 battles down. No mistakes. But God didn't say be perfect in the English. He said be perfect in the Greek. Tell us. T-E-L-I-O-S. Perfection means to fulfill your assignment. That's why God said, be you perfect as I am perfect. You mean make no mistakes? No, knucklehead. Fulfill your assignment. Abraham finally fulfilled his assignment even after he messed up with Hagar. Fulfill your assignment. 
you may make a mistake here. You may have to get held back a class or two. You may have to do some summer school. But at the end of the day, get your degree from me. Somebody say, I'm going to fulfill my assignment. you got to fulfill your assignment. But it's hard to fulfill that which you don't know. Jesus said in John 17, 4, Father, I brought you glory on earth by fulfilling the work you gave me to do. I completed my assignment, was born with no sin, went to the cross with no sin, and because I was born with no sin and never received any sin, never thought sin, did sin, spoke sin, I went to the cross sinless so that someone could get saved. I brought you glory by fulfilling my assignment. So, so God says, share with my people that when they begin to desire to renew their mind, they will begin to regain the power that's at work within them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. See, when I went down memory lane, how many of you all felt a little good as I was sharing some of those old yeah. stories? Yeah, yeah. You know what? You were beginning to regain the joy of your youth. You were beginning to, 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 to gain. I called up Elder Devin with me, me and Pete, I'm part of the, the, the Corvette Club. So a couple months ago last year, I got a convertible Corvette. My sister took a picture of me, and she said, it reminds me when you were growing up how you loved Speed Racer. And I'm like, wow. I called Devin, I YouTube a Speed Racer, and I was, what's the little monkey's name? Chim Chim. Remember Chim Chim? Remember, yeah, remember what was the girlfriend named Trixie? Man, that took me back to 7 Fairham Court, Marlon. And I was, I'm YouTube and I'm like, man, Speed Racer. I'm like, man, Speed Racer. I called up Chuck. I said, man, let's go, let's get on the road, man. Man, you Sheldon Milk. Let's get on the road. But I'm watching a YouTube of a cartoon from the 70s and I began to renew the joy of my youth. See, I know some of y'all are tired, a little worn out. That's why Isaiah see it. Do you not know? Have you not heard the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth? He will not grow tired or weary. His understanding, no one can fathom. I like this. He gives strength to the weary, increases the power of the weak. Even children grow tired and weary. Young men stumble and fall. But for those who hope and have faith in the Lord, he will renew. See, you got to renew your mind. He'll renew your strength. Some of y'all walking around all arthritic and just depressing and stuff like that. Renew your mind and watch you get a pep to your step. It's crazy. Greg, I tell you, I be playing golf. I be playing golf with 80-year-old men. 85 year old man, I'm saying, how's these cats? Because they have renewed their mind. Yeah. I'm looking at 50 year old folks, can't even walk up the steps. Yeah. Renew your mind, you'll renew your body. Yeah. See, if you renew your mind, see, so y'all think, no, it's not going to happen overnight. Let me, let me break it down. This ain't no prep flow. Renew your mind, then your mind is going to say, renew your gym membership. <laughs> you just got new mind, you get a six pack. No. Renew your mind. Your mind is going to say, renew that membership at Crunch, LA Fitness, Curve, YMCA, YWCA. Once renew that. And about six to nine months later, you'll have some pep in your step. You've lost 15 pounds. You'll feel better about yourself. Am I helping anybody? Yeah, you can't name it and claim it. You'll be fat the rest of your life trying to name it and claim it. You name it, and then you claim a membership, then you work out four times a week, you get with your meal, you change your diet, you, you go gluten-free, you knock out the sugar, you don't understand that Pepsi is of the devil. <laughs> yeah, all right, yeah, you can't renew your mind and then stopping at Wendy's. Renew your mind. McDonald's is okay. Got some owners in there, got some McDonald's owners in the house. The Wendy hamburgers will get you fat, but a Big Mac. Got some McDonald's owners in the house and CEOs and CMOs. So he says, watch this. He says, he will renew your strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. I got some more good news for you. Prophet Joel said in 225, chapter 2, verse 25, God said, I will restore to you the years of the locusts of Eden, the canker worm. The caterpillar and the palm of worm. Psalm 103 says, Praise the Lord, O my soul, 
My, my mind needs to praise the Lord. David said, listen, sometimes I got to encourage myself in the Lord. Maybe it might not be your wife. It might not be your husband. It might not be your mama or your daddy. Maybe even a preacher. But you got to learn to, to pop your own collar. Be your own booster. Slap yourself in the butt and say, good day. Good week. Good game. Good life. You got to motivate yourself to go. Mm. Come on. Come. Let me tell you how weak a generation is. How are you going to be paid millions of dollars and because a quarterback said run the route again, you decide not to show up. This chap scored more touchdowns in the history of any stiller, was a number one all pro selection in all 50 writers removed Antonio Brown from the all pro team. He has lost millions of dollars because his mind is still in Liberty City in Florida where he grew up at. He grew up in a gang infested. He, he, by 16, A.B. was by himself. Yes, A.B., you done went through a hell of a lot in life, but the difference between me and you, A.B., I ain't making millions, and you are. But because you still got the mind of the projects, you're in the NFL with a project mind, and you're about to blow your career. So you need to renew your mind. I don't care if you A, B, or just you and me. We need a renewed mind. Uh, so, so Psalm says, I'm telling my soul to praise the Lord, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, oh my soul, my mind, my will, my emotions. Let me not forget all of his benefits and blessings. Let me not forget he who forgave my sin and heals my body. Let me not forget he who redeemed my life from the pit of hell. Let me not forget he who satisfied my desires with good things. Watch this last verse. So that your youth is renewed like eagles. Yeah. The more, see, we are not, we're focusing on the curses and not the blessings. Yeah. You're, you're focusing, watch this. I know some folks that got a statement, statement on this statement. There's some folks that are depressed based upon their finances and their lack there. Do you know most of the world don't even have finances? Right. Let me say that again. 50% of the world makes $2 a month. And you're looking at your bank account, there's only $50 in there. That could be somewhat depressing, but if you take that 50 and take it to Africa, yeah. they yeah. think you're a millionaire. Yeah. 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 50% of the world don't even have shoes. And you, we got closets full of shoes. 50% of the world can't even flush a toilet. And we got to understand, looking at your life, and even though it's not where you want it, compare it to those who have nothing, and you'll start praising the Lord. Yeah. So you got to have a revelation that our God is a God of reconciliation, restoration, rejuvenation, reinvigoration, revitalization, and rededication. Yeah. He can, somebody say, he can make me new again. Yeah. He can make you new again. Go to 1 Corinthians. We're going to land this plane called purpose. 1 Corinthians 2. Am I helping anyone today? Yeah. He can make you, but it's going to be work. Yeah. It's going to be work. Elder Devin, you lost, what, 85, 90 pounds? Was that easy? How long did it take? Eight, nine months. He went from 300 to 225. That's the way that do Devin out of Schumann. 225. And so he could not lose overnight when it took him years to gain. You got to understand when it comes to changing your life, you got to do it one day at a time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I, I never really understood the wisdom behind one day at a time because I can't take two. Yeah. You can, I can't take three days at a time. I can only take one day. At a time. But when you're trying to focus on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, you miss your Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch God give his word. Praise me for your past. Perfect your present. And it will prepare you for your future. Praise me for your past. Perfect whatever you are doing right now. Complete it. You will graduate high school if you perfect and complete all of your classes, which then allows you, if you're called, to go to college. If you perfect college, you ain't got to have A's everywhere, but if you will pass enough exams and maintain a, a what's the GPA you need, Dad? 2.0, you can end up with a bachelor's degree. So you can go from high school to grad school by perfecting your present. Amen? Amen. You got to learn to praise him for your past. Even the pain of your past. 
even the mistakes of your past. You know why? They were allowed by God and they become part and parcel of your personality. So Joseph had revelation of that. And when his brothers came in Genesis chapter 50 and they thought that he wanted to kill them for what they did to him 17, 20, he's 37, 20 years earlier when they threw him in the pit, beat him up, threw him in the pit, sold him to the Ishmaelites who sold him to Potiphar, whose wife lied on him and he had to go to prison. They said, please, our daddy wrote this letter. He knew his father didn't write the letter. And the letter said, please forgive your brothers, sign me. <laughs> like, come on, he couldn't be signed in Jacob, Israel. But he knew his brothers were lying. And he said, listen, what you meant for bad, God meant for good. And I've been sent here for this. I never would be in this position as prime minister of Egypt if you all had not did what you did to me 20 years ago. You've been forgiven when I looked at how much God has blessed my life. Look at the pain of your past and begin to forgive those that hurt you back then. It's not for their sake, it's for your freedom. Not forgiving somebody for hurting you, abandoning you, not forgiving the father that wasn't there, not forgiving the mother that wasn't all the mother you wanted her to be, not forgiving the first husband, the first boyfriend. That's like drinking poison and expecting them to get sick. You need to forgive them so that you can move on. Amen? Amen. First Corinthians 8. Man, I'll take a clap. First Corinthians can I get one clap over there? Two clap, three clap, four clap, and six clap, seven clap, eight clap, nine clap. Can I get a standing ovation up there? Hey! Can I get one stand, two stand, three, another stand? Amen! I like this type of auction of anointing. Amen, amen. Let me get you guys up. Oh, y'all ain't got no game to go home to watch, huh? Oh, we can stay all day. So next week we end it early because the Patriots are playing. Hey, okay, sorry. First Corinthians 2, 6, I'm getting you guys up out of it, amen. This is deep, I got to spend the next study on this. We do, however, speak a message. This leaves your mind to wake up, and I'm done. I'm sorry, thank, First Corinthians, thank you, uh, Minister James. First Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 6. It says, wisdom from the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Watch. We speak a message of wisdom amongst the Sure. But not the wisdom of this age or the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. No, we speak of God's secret wisdom, a wisdom that has been hidden and God destined for our glory before time began. Oh, I wish you understand that. See, see, none of the rulers of this age understood that a PhD from Harvard don't give you spiritual wisdom. A Rhodes Scholar from Oxford don't give you spiritual wisdom. A 4.0 GPA, QPA, and a 180 IQ don't give you spiritual wisdom. It says none of the rulers, doctors, leaders of this age understood it. For if they did, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However, as it's written, and we're almost done no eye has seen, no ear has heard. What's the next one? No mind. no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him, comma, but God has revealed it to us by his spirit. So his Holy Spirit will only release to you the secret wisdom God has for you to your human spirit. Your human spirit must then speak it to your soul. Your mind must get revelation of what God shared to your human spirit. Your soul and your mind tells it to your brain. And then you begin to achieve what God has destined for you. Amen? Amen. Let me break it down this way. You may want to write this down. What your mind conceives, your brain receives. And if your heart believes, your body will achieve. Come on, come on. Say that again. What your mind conceives, conception, that's where it comes from. Your mind just got pregnant with a dream. But if your mind does not remove, release it to your brain, 
Your brain has to believe what your mind has conceived. But if your heart does not believe, I'm sorry, the brain receives what the mind conceives, but here is the key. If your heart doesn't believe, you will abort the seed. The difference between Mary giving birth to Jesus and Mary not giving birth to Jesus, she received a word and said, I believe it. Be it unto me as you have said. Immediately, her physical womb was impregnated based upon what her mind heard, her heart believed. An angel spoke to her physical ears, heard Gabriel say, Mary, you, you, you are favored amongst all women. Her physical ears heard it. Her brain heard it. But she had to believe it in her heart for it to come to pass. So what your mind conceives from God, your brain must then receive physical. Your heart, spiritual, must believe. And then your body can achieve. Amen? Amen. When I say body, Sean, has, have, have your papers been written by themselves? <laughs> no. Did, did the typewriter type by itself? No. When you had to study Spanish, did you have to get a physical Spanish book and a physical person to help you with Spanish? Still doing and what grade did you get? B plus. B plus. See, his mind conceived that he could pass this college class. His brain received what his mind conceived. His heart believed it. And then his body said, let's go to work. Let's study. Let's stay up late. Because you got to get to the part that faith without works is dead. I don't care what you believe you can achieve in life. If you ain't willing to put the work in, let me tell you something. I'm sweating right now. Let me tell you, you may want to write this down. Real success is 99% perspiration, 1% inspiration. I'm going to say it again. It don't take nothing to get a dream. It takes a hell of a lot to get out that bed and go to work. Go to sleep. You'll get a dream. Go to sleep. Joseph was asleep and got a dream. Joseph in Egypt, the other Joseph was asleep and got a dream. Don't, don't divorce Mary. It takes nothing to be inspired. Come on. Inspiration. Uh, Bill Gates got inspired with Mac. Uh, Jeff Bozos got inspired with Amazon. Oprah got inspired with Harpo Communication. Tyler Perry got inspired with Medea. An inspiration is nothing, but it took years for that inspiration to come to manifestation through a whole lot of perspiration. In dedication, in motivation. <laughs> so, so it what? No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived. What God has prepared for those who do what? But God will reveal it to us by spirit. Unless this, the spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For me, I'm sitting there like Mike X from the street, former crip, former dealer, former uh, uh, incarcerated human being. All of these things, it's deep that I'm now preaching to you. Yeah. Wow. But God says, son, the reason you're a pastor, you got deep with me and allow me to show you, you. And if my people will get deep with me, I will show them, them. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We finish this. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who amongst men knows the what? Dear go. Who knows the thoughts of a man except the man's spirit within him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. So let me conclude. What I'm trying to tell you is this. And I got to close my Bible because I'll keep on preaching. There are some thoughts that are in you that you'll never get revelation of without the renewing of your mind. Amen. Because there's another scripture we don't have time, but the Bible says, for God to show those without a renewed mind his thoughts is foolishness. Yeah. To see Ashley now, CEO of her own company, when I prophesied that to her eight years ago, her mind was in the renewing process. She was able to receive that. But Ashley, you know people that I could have shared that same story with, and they said, you're crazy. 
um, Jeff, we know those that I can tell them of their greatness. God can give me a prophetic revelation of their purpose and I can share it with them. Will we know them? And I can tell the men will know cats that are called to be preachers that are on the streets right now. Yeah. We know killers that are called by God to be apostles. And if I spoke to them because their mind is not renewed, they say, X, you're crazy. And I want you to get to the point that your mind is so renewed that God can tell you the most incredible thing about you. And you would say, yes, be it unto me as you have seen it. Because if you can tell a 13-year-old virgin she's going to give birth to the Messiah without having sex and she can do it, you can definitely go back to school and get your degree. You can definitely write that book. You can definitely open that business. If God could tell Peter, Jesus, come to me, and Peter could walk on water, and you can't open up a business, if Moses could go back to Egypt and tell Pharaoh to let my people go, when Harriet Tubman left Canada and went to Alabama, she didn't go to the master. She went to the Underground Railroad. Moses went to the master. They said, we ain't taking no Underground Railroad. We're going out in the prayer. If Moses could do that, you don't think you can do what God called you to do? If David can be king, you can't be a lawyer? You got to understand that there is such greatness in you waiting to be released with the renewing of your mind. Amen. Amen. Give God a hand clap, you beautiful church. Amen.